Okairi! Welcome back to my channel, Made Between the Pages. My name is Taylor, and today we are doing a massive book haul. So the last book haul on my channel was, I believe, last year in November. And uh, I have been accumulating books since then, but I just haven't sat down to show you what I've gotten. Um, but just like in that November video, I do want to say that I do have more books that I've accumulated, um, more like special editions, but the shipping to send those special editions to myself in Japan is just a bit too pricey, so often I send those to my American house. And since travel has not returned to usual, we're still in a panini, uh, I haven't gotten my hands on those books still to this day. So there are quite a few books waiting for me in the States, so definitely look forward to a huge haul when that happens. But I do have quite a few books, quite a few, <laughs> that I have amassed uh, since last November. So I would like to sit down and go through those with you. Most of these are adult fantasy, as that is my main wheelhouse, but uh, there are a few other genres in here that you'll see pop up here and there. Also, I know the angle is different from what I usually do, but, you know, I have to film this picking up books over and over again. Uh, usually I film standing up, but that just wasn't going to work, so we're sitting down at a lower level on my bookshelf. So now that all of that is out of the way, let's go ahead and start with the haul. Let's start with the adult fantasy books I have accumulated. The first books I'm going to talk about are the illustrated editions of Assassin's Apprentice, Royal Assassin, and Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb. Uh, these are the special editions that were released, I believe, one or two years ago. Um, and I purchased these actually quite recently because I read uh, Assassin's Apprentice. I read this on my Kindle and I loved it so much that I knew I needed a physical edition to like sit down and open the pages, you know, smell them, look at them. I needed to be 100% fully in this world. So I went ahead and splurged for these editions. I have currently only read Assassin's Apprentice, although Royal Assassin is on my TBR, my current TBR for this month. And then Assassin's Quest, I definitely plan to get to before the end of this year. Uh, these editions are stunning. They are really well crafted. They're heavy. The paper quality is really solid. Uh, they have these nice kind of header pages for the beginning of each chapter. And as the name implies, there are illustrations inside. Let me see if I can find one, which I can't now that I want to show you one. <laughs> There aren't too many illustrations, but they are beautiful, the ones that are in there. So I'm really excited to experience this world through this specific edition of um, the Farseer Trilogy. A funny story about these editions is I had actually ordered them from Book Depository, who usually does a really good job of packaging their books well, but th when they arrived, um, both Assassin's Apprentice and Assassin's Quest had damage all over the covers. Um, there, the printing was off, there was a misprint, um, so that like the, the spine wasn't aligned correctly and the front was slightly off. So of course I emailed them and told them about the problem and uh, they said they would just send me uh, another version, another edition like free of charge. So I just have these two like misprint editions that <laughs> I don't really know what to do with. So I actually have two versions, two editions of, or two copies of Assassin's Quest and Assassin's Apprentice, two of them which are misprints. So I don't really know what to do with those, but I have those in my house now. So there's that. Next, I have The Shadow of What Was Lost. Now, this series is a series that has called my name since the first time I saw it. Um, I don't, I mean, the cover is gorgeous, so I think that's really what pulled me in. But I've heard that it's like this kind of classic uh, fantasy feel where, you know, it's a group traveling together, you know, trying to save a nation, nations at war, that kind of feel, and that's something that I just love. And uh, recently, I have been in the mood for more classic fantasy. So. As long as that mood lasts long enough for me to finally get to this one, I'd love to pick it up before the end of this year. I think this is going to look stunning on the shelves. I love the, um, the design on the spine, and I think it's going to look great with the second and the third in the series. But look, here I am already talking about getting the second and the third in the series, and I haven't even read the first one. Um, but I am excited to get to this one at some point in the future, even though I don't know many details. But I'd like to hear some, so let me know in the comments down below if you have read this and you think that I should pick it up soon. 
Another fantasy that I kind of bought on a whim and don't know too much about is Legacy of Ash. Uh, this has been on my last couple TBRs. I'm working on finally actually getting to it. Uh, but I bought it because I have a couple, I've heard some some whispers from some people that I, you know, I watch on booktube and I respect their taste that said that they enjoyed this. And the cover is beautiful. So I kind of purchased it on a whim when I was getting another book um, for my collection. And I haven't picked it up yet, but I definitely want to. Again, it's gonna look stunning on the shelf uh, with its with its friends in the future if I do end up loving this. She is a chunker though, she is a big one. <laughs> so hopefully uh, I can make time to get to this one before the end of the year, fingers crossed. The book that I was actually purchasing when I ended up buying Legacy of Ash because it was beautiful uh, was The Black Coast by Mike Brooks. If you've been around my channel for the last couple months, basically since I've read this book, you've heard of this. I love this, I champion this, I have a full review of this on my channel. This is a really unique epic fantasy book that focuses on different communities actually God forbid, cooperating <laughs> or trying to cooperate and coexist. There is war, there is violence, you know, so all of that usual epic fantasy stuff is in there, but there's a really unique cooperative aspect to this book that I just love from the bottom of my heart. Uh, Mike Brooks also explores uh, gender neutrality through one of the societies in this world having that baked into their, their system, their societal system. It's just a beautifully done book. It's got dragons, like how to train your dragon type five dragons, and I I love them so much. It's it's just, oh, it's so good. I'll just link to the review. Anyway, I love this book. I purchased it. Um, I actually have the sequel, which I'll show you right now. The sequel to The Black Coast is The Splinter King. I am so happy to finally have this book in my hands. However, I ordered this from Amazon, not Book Depository, and I know Book Depository is owned by Amazon, um, but they usually do a really good job of packaging their books and they arrive safely. Amazon does not. I don't know what it is about Japanese Amazon, but they don't give a shit about books, even though they started as a book shipping company. So when this thing arrived, this poor thing, the corner, every single corner is damaged and like bent up at the side, the back cover is as well. Um, then on the front, there's like this box cutter. I don't know if you can, can you see it in the camera? You can't, but someone definitely cut the cover with a box cutter. And it's just, it's, it's quite beat up. <laughs> and this is supposed to be a brand new book. This is actually a pre-order that got pushed back twice. So it arrived way later than it should have, even though I was dying to get my hands on it. And now it is beat up when it arrived. So I'm not happy. <laughs> uh, I did ask for them to, you know, send me a new one and I will return this one. But I am excited to get to the contents of this book because as I said, I love the first one and I can't wait to see where this goes. Uh, so yeah, this one has a bit more flop too than the first one, which makes me excited. The first one was a little stiff. So yeah, uh, the cover is beautiful though. And the sides are going to look great. So again, can't wait to display this on my shelf. Hopefully I'll have, you know, a, an edition of this that I can keep uh, very soon. The next adult fantasy is a hardback I'm really happy to have gotten my hands on because I have a feeling it's going to sell out, and that is The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. Uh, I haven't read this yet, but I have a feeling I'm really going to like it. It's based in Norse mythology, which I am a huge fan of, and I just had to get this hardback because I am a hardback lover, and as someone who c collects like adult fantasy, if the hardback goes out of print, it is a pain in the ass to get your hands on it later, so I decided to go ahead and make this purchase. Uh, I love the epicness of this and that it's a wraparound cover with a gigantic dragon. I mean, my fantasy heart is just in love with this. Again, don't know too much about what's in it. <laughs> don't really need to know this cover and then the reviews of people I trust saying that John Gwynn kind of knocked it out of the park with this one. I cannot wait to get to it. Now, speaking of books that are hard to get your hands on, one of the most exciting additions to my collection this year is this hardback edition of The Way of Kings uh, by Brandon Sanderson. This is the first book in the Stormlight Archive, uh, and I have been collecting, as you can see behind me, the UK hardback editions of this series. Now, the Words of Radiance I have here is one that I got from Abe Books because it was not in print uh, when I got this one, so uh, this one was uh, a pretty penny and a little hard to find, but I, I love having this in my collection. Oathbringer is the first one that I bought when it was released. So that is, you know, when I had already gotten into the Cosmere, when they released um, that edition of Oathbringer, I was able to purchase it. Uh, the same thing with 
the uh, Rhythm of War uh, hardback. So I was able to purchase this one uh, when it was released because I was already a fan of the series. But for The Way of Kings, uh, this was also out of print. And when I say that Words of Radiance was a pretty penny, that does not even compare to how much uh, this book was on the market before they did a second printing, which is what this book is. So I was able to get my hands on the second printing of this. I'm so happy to have this in my hands and I have the full set of what's been released so far uh, on my shelf behind me. It's one of the main pride and joys of my collection and I'm happy to actually be able to display it in this video because usually I film farther up and you can't see it. So yes, I'm so excited to have this one in my collection. And now for the final section of my adult fantasy uh, haul, I want to talk about the self-published books that I've acquired. Up until now, I didn't read or talk about self-published books very often. Um, you know, if there was one that was extra hyped, I might pick it up, but I didn't seek them out. But I recently just completed the India Chords Readathon. Um, I'll have some links down below to, you know, content of that for that readathon, you know, on my channel. But I recently completed that readathon and it really changed my view on self-published and indie books. So I'm really interested in starting to focus on those more and review those more um, and, you know, support the authors that I love by actually purchasing those books. So the first one, uh, I actually didn't purchase myself, but it was a gift and that is The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wang. This was gifted to me by Sophia over on Fantasy Book Addict. Um, I have already read this book. It wasn't my all-time favorite, but it was definitely a good read. I know people who love this book to the bottom of their heart. They swear up and down by it, um, so it's definitely worth your time. This is a Japanese-based adult fantasy where we follow our main character, Misaki, who lives uh, on this kind of remote island that holds to more traditional living um, and more traditional ways of life than the rest of the modernized world. Uh, and she is a mother on this island. And uh, war comes to this island, the Sword of Kaigen. And we start finding out that everything is not exactly what it seems. The character work in this book is fantastic and it did make me cry. So if you're looking for a self-published book or a book to kind of pick up and get into the self-published world a little bit, this one has a lot of love and hype around it. Moving on to a self-published series that is a favorite, or at least the first book is, and I'm looking for the other two to be, that would be Along the Razor's Edge, The Lessons Never Learned, and From Cold Ashes Risen by Rob J. Hayes. I discovered him through the Indie Accords readathon. I had picked up Along the Razor's Edge as part of that, and I loved it so much that I bought the second and third book immediately after. So I'm gonna have a full review of this on my channel um, in my wrap up coming up, maybe an individual review, we'll see. So you will hear more about this book you know, coming up, so I won't go into it here. Just know that I adored this book. Uh, the main character is a true, as I would call her, a bitch queen. She she is morally gray, she does horrendous things, uh, but you still somehow kind of root for her. So yeah, I, if you, that sounds up your alley at all, look forward to future content about it, but I would definitely recommend picking this up. I'm only a little bit into The Lessons Never Learned, I don't know if you can see my tabs, about 70 pages in, but uh, every time I sit down I do blow through this very quickly. I just haven't had time to sit down <laughs> recently to read it, but this is a high priority for my TBR this month, and I don't think I'm going to be able to stop myself from going up to the third one once I finish this one, so yeah, it's constantly surprising me, I don't know where it's going to go, I, I can't wait, I can't wait to continue. All right, so that's the adult fantasy portion of this book haul. Now let's go ahead and move on to middle grade. So the first one I think is classified as middle grade, but this is the most expensive, nicest book that I was able to ship to myself in Japan because the shipping from uh, where it's from to the States or Japan wasn't that different. And that is the Folio Society edition of Howl's Moving Castle. So I have this stunning slipcase edition here, the detailing. Then uh, here's the spine. Then if we take this out, oh my gosh, every time I take it out, I just get so happy. This is the actual book itself. So the art is also a wraparound. I got a little shimmery spider web here. 
So I read this book about two months ago, and while I had seen the Ghibli movie before, it wasn't an all-time favorite of mine. But this book is an all-time favorite of mine and bumped the Ghibli adaptation of it you know, up in my favorites of Ghibli movies because I loved this so much. Uh, it, it entranced me, enticed me from the very beginning. It's such a whimsical, wonderful uh, fairy tale story about a girl named Sophie who is the oldest, youngest? Youngest, I believe. Oh, now I'm not sure whether it's oldest or youngest sister <laughs> uh, in her family. But either way, she feels kind of resigned to having to take over the family hat business, even though it's not necessarily what she wants in her life. And while we enter her life and she's trying to figure all of this out, uh, she has a, an unlucky encounter with the Witch of the Waste, who turns her into an old woman who, who is, you know, in this corner here. That's who we see here. And... Uh, so she decides that, well, she can't just hang around and hope for this, you know, spell to wear off and hope her family doesn't notice. So she leaves to go try to get this, this lifted. Uh, and she runs into Hal's moving castle. Hal being a wizard or a, you know, a, um, wizard, is that the word I'm looking for? A sorcerer uh, in the area who is known for stealing women's hearts and eating them. So people tend to avoid his castle, which moves of its own accord. Uh, but she ends up, you know, coming in contact with castle and the story goes from there. So I knew I had to own this. It is a gorgeous edition of one of my new favorite stories. Uh, it has really nice chapter headings. The quality of the paper is beautiful. And it also has uh, illustrations. Again, just like the other one I can't find, but here's one. Here's one of the illustrations. So yes, this was money well spent. I smile every time I see this on my shelves. And I think I'm gonna do a reread really soon of this with this edition. The other two middle grades I got were Wondersmith and Holopox, the UK hardback editions. I do have the dust jackets of these elsewhere in my house, but I store them with these beautiful naked hardbacks uh, displaying on my shelves. Uh, I love this series. I hauled Nevermore, I think actually in my November um, book haul that I was talking about from last year, and I finally read it uh, at the end of the year. And then I put off kind of continuing the series, even though I really enjoyed it. But then when I finally picked up Wondersmith, oh my god, this book was amazing. And I knew I was in for the whole ride of this series. I'm obsessed with this book. The whimsies off the charts, it's, it's fantastic. Oh my god, I'm obsessed. Uh, and then this is the third book, Hollow Pox. So now that I love this series, like from the bottom of my heart, I will be purchasing all of the books in this particular edition because they're gorgeous. Just gorgeous. I still need to get my hands on this edition of Nevermore. It's not in print anymore, but I did see a couple secondhand ones. Uh, but if you do have that and you're not interested in keeping it, let me know in the comments down below and I would be willing to take that off your hands right away. Nevermore follows the story of Morgan Crow, who is a cursed child, and on her 11th birthday, she's supposed to die. But rather than die, she gets whisked away by this man named Jupiter North to Nevermore, which is a magical world where she tries to take three different trials to enter their elite magical school. It's just as beautiful and whimsical as it sounds, and I implore you to pick it up if you haven't yet. There are a couple other middle grades that I'm looking to buy uh, because I went on like a a middle grade reading binge a couple months ago, uh, but there are, I'm very particular about the editions that I buy and there are a couple specific editions that I'm trying to find, uh, but look forward to, to more of those in the future. But that concludes the middle grade section of this haul. So let's move on to comics. The main comic series I wanna talk about is Monstrous. So I was convinced to read this series solely by Sophia over in Fantasy Book Addict. She loves this series and, and sings its praises. And I also really enjoy it. Uh, the art in this is absolutely beautiful. So here's the cover of the first one. You may have seen this cover floating around before. Uh, the second one, volume two, The Blood. Volume three, Heaven. Volume four, The Chosen. And volume five, War Child. So as you can see from the cover, the art is stunning. I'll see if I can find a good um, image to show you 
inside here. These are all very bloody battle scenes. I'm not sure everyone wants to see that. So that's another point about this is it's very bloody, uh, quite violent. <laughs> so just be aware of that. But the, the color scheme and the art is gorgeous. So I never get tired of that when I read those. I do have some volumes that are more favorites than others. I think it's pretty natural with comics. I believe it was number three was not, oh, number three is not called Heaven, it's called Haven, sorry guys. <laughs> but volume three, oh, and there's one backwards too, I'm a mess. <laughs> uh, number three was not my favorite, but I remember loving, I think it was War Child, a volume five that I had that the last one that I had read. And I do believe volume six is coming out or has come out and definitely interested in continuing. Uh, the quality of these is also, it, it feels very good when you're reading them. The flop to them feels great. Uh, so the, the reading experience of these is also wonderful. Basically, Monstrous takes place in this world where there are the arcanes, those that have magic, and those that don't, and uh, witches as well. And uh, those three factions are at war with each other, a very bloody, very vicious war, and our main character is half human, half arcane, and uh, she finds out that she has a basically like a demon god inside her, uh, and she's learning to coexist, kind of, sort of, with this being. Uh, and it's about her, her life as she navigates through this war, uh, doing what she believes is best, which is not always viewed as best by others. Now the manga I want to talk about, I've had on my shelf for quite a while, you've probably seen it in the background before, but that is Hanazakari no Kimi Tachie, or For You in Full Blossom, uh, or uh, Hanakimi is the English name for this. Uh, so I got these special editions from a secondhand bookstore here called Book Off. They had the entire series in these really nice uh, anniversary editions and I had to go for it. They were for a really nice price. So these are in Japanese, so I am reading them. I'm making my way through them slowly, but of course it's a bit slower since it's not my, my native tongue uh, that they're written in. So uh, I just picked out the first four volumes here. So here's number one, here's number two, Number three. What's really nice about these editions as well is they do have a little color panel in the front. So the first page has color and then they have a little color panel of art in the beginning because they are the special editions. So uh, I do plan to make my way through all of these, like I said. I also plan to collect some of my other favorite manga in these kinds of editions, because they do pop up in places like Book Off quite often. Uh, manga is not as expensive here as they are in the States, so they're a lot easier to find and pick up. So that is a really nice transition into the last part of this, which is going to be Japanese books. Now these books are mostly by the same author, illustrator that I love, but I do have one that is not by that person. Uh, so I'll show that first. And that is this set of children's books that I got from my family here uh, called Daruma-san. So my husband's family knows that I love books, especially uh, cute kids uh, Japanese books I'm a, I'm a big fan of. So this is a set of three that is called Daruma-san ga, Daruma-san to, and if I can get it out, Daruma-san no. So this is a set of the three books that are in the series and they come in this little package. Uh, I think this was a special, um, set that they had around Christmas time. So my favorite of the three is Daruma-san ga, and all of these are meant to teach how to use the particle that's mentioned in the book. So this book teaches kids how to use the word ga, or the particle ga, the particle no, and the particle to, which I could always use a little bit of extra studying. <laughs> uh, but the, the drawings in this are so cute, uh, and this first book actually also teaches uh, how to use onomatopoeia. So you have Daruma-san ga, <laughs> and that's the sound of, you know, something falling over. So it's that type of book. And whenever I want to smile or laugh, I pick these up and I just, I just flip through them quickly. I love having these in my collection.
okay, so my camera battery died. <laughs> uh, so if the angle is a little bit different than before, that's because I had to stop, you know, charge my battery and come back. So we are back. Now I don't exactly remember what the last thing I said was, but uh, while my battery was charging, I did realize that there was one more manga that I hadn't included in the manga section, which is Spy Family. Uh, now this is a series that my husband had read quite a while ago and he said that I would love it and I finally picked it up uh, last month or maybe two months ago. It only has six volumes. I think I've read the first four at this point and I love this. He was absolutely correct. Uh, so this is kind of a found family trope manga, which is, it's my favorite trope of all time, so it's not really a surprise that I enjoyed that aspect of this. But this story is about our main character here, who is the best spy for his country. And for the new mission that he's been assigned, he needs a family as part of the cover. So he finds like a random woman um, and a random child to adopt to kind of act as his family. However, what he doesn't know is that the woman who is now his wife is an assassin and the child that he adopted can read people's minds and none of them know that he's a spy. So they all have their own kind of secret um, aspect of their life that they're not sharing with everyone else, but they also have motivations to keep up this family kind of ruse, this family idea. So we end up with a lot of these comedic, uh, really heartwarming situations of these people kind of learning to be a true family. So that's actually a great transition to move into the next section of this haul, which is my Japanese books. So I'm first going to go through the collection that I have the most of by the same author or artist that I had mentioned earlier, and that is June Ida. So one book that has been mentioned, I think, in my previous haul was uh, the book No by him. This is an absolutely stunning, gorgeous, kids picture book uh, that kind of delves into the whimsy of everyday life and encourages people to take a closer look to see what other magical elements might be waiting if they just take the time to, to look a little closer. This book is the epitome of a book that makes me happy. I whip this book out all the time when I'm just like having my coffee, having my tea, and uh, want to start my day off on a happier note. So I did explain this um, pretty fully in, in other uh, videos, but just a quick summary is that this book is called No, as you can see here, maybe you can't work with me light. There it is. And no is the Japanese possessive. So if you take the, the word watashi, which means I, you add no, which is the possessive, you get my. So this book uh, talks about um, how you go deeper and deeper into something. So if we take a look at this first picture, okay, we have a little, um, that's not a porcupine, what's this called? Harinezumi. <laughs> Uh, hedgehog. There we go. You have a little hedgehog here. He's got his nose in a book. I have more than once run into something reading like that. Then there's a small detail of the picture that uh, June Ida then goes deeper into on the next picture. So here we have a close-up picture of the actual book the hedgehog is reading. Then we go one step further in looking at the little oni that are on this and look at the, the Oni a little closer. So uh, this book is just magical, whimsical, such a joy to look through. And every time I read it, I find something new. Uh, and this book does have writing on it as well, Japanese writing. So it's not only pictures. However, getting into the other works that of his that haven't been mentioned on my channel before, this book, Michi, uh, is much more well-known by him, much more famous, and it does not have writing in it. It focuses specifically on his art. Uh, but the word Michi means road. So here we have it um, in, uh, written out in uh, English letters, and then we have it in Japanese on the back. So this book is uh, more popular, as I had mentioned, you might see it outside of Japan, but this book uh, follows the story of two little, um, little kids. We have a young boy, and then if we flip to the other side of the book in the back, if we start from the other side, we have a young girl. And uh, actually, I'm going to take the dust jacket off because it's a little slippery here. 
Um, and the artwork is printed directly on the book, which I just, oh, I live for. I love it so much. Um, and this is a really high quality book. The, the pages are thick. They're like cardboard almost. It just feels good in your hands. I'm so happy to have this in my collection. But essentially what we do is we follow our two little kids uh, as they leave their respective houses. So on this page, we can see the young boy leaving his house. And again, if we flip to the back and go from the other angle, we can see the little girl leaving her house. And they uh, follow their own respective paths through different cities, towns, worlds that June Ida has created. So there's also kind of a, a Where's Waldo aspect to it because you have to find the little boy or the little girl inside the picture. And then eventually uh, in one of these cities, they do meet each other uh, and, uh, you know, come together down their path in life. So it is kind of, it's a story without words. And it is, talk about the whimsy of, of no, of being able to pick it up and find something new every time. This book is the epitome of that. And his art just makes me so happy. Uh, so this is Michi by June Ida. Two other collections that are just purely his art are Hug, and home, and these are exactly what they sound like. They are collections of different depictions of different hugs and different homes, and how those might have different iterations in people's lives. Some of them, you know, are more whimsical, some are more realistic, so I'll just show you one or two from each one. So we have hug here. Uh, let's see if I can find a good one. Uh, here's one of a mermaid hugging a prince with some coral in the background. And here's one of a little girl hugging her cat. And a father and a daughter. So it's just really heartwarming depictions of hugs. And then in home, we have here on the front, this like forest style home. Here we have how a home might find a place on a trumpet. <laughs> uh, another example might be here, how imagination might create a home out of a bed sheet. So yes, it's just uh, another whimsical collection of his art. These next two I actually haven't mentioned on my channel before, and the first one is Nordic Tales. So this is a book that is illustrated by Jun Aida and edited by Shigeo Goto. So basically it's a translated work of different Nordic tales uh, accompanied by Jun Aida's artwork. So an example of what it might look like is here we have the Japanese translation of the tale, followed by on the next page, a depiction of the scenery from that story. So obviously, as you can see, there are very large blocks of text in this book that uh, are gonna take me a long time to work my way through because, you know, fairy tales have, you know, not really normal language, <laughs> not necessarily language used every day. So it's a little bit of a, of a struggle for me, but I'm slowly, very slowly making my way through this. And hopefully one day I'll be fluent enough to, to read it like a normal book. But here is another rendition of that. So it's just a beautifully imaginative rendition of these tales. Uh, here's another one with trees growing out of a book. So that is Nordic Tales. And then I have another one that's very much in the same vein, which is Ihatvo, which is based on the stories of Kenji Miyazawa. So I haven't actually read Kenji Miyazawa's works myself, but I did look into them after seeing that Junaida did illustrations um, to go along with his stories, and he's a very famous uh, Japanese storyteller. So I have here, basically like the other one, we have the, the story on the left here. The left? Yes, the left here. And then we have the picture to go along with it. So again, this will take me a long time to work my way through, but in the meantime, I have some beautiful pictures to look at. <laughs> Here's another one. So I just love 
uh, Jun Ida's work so much that I want to have the full collection of what he's published. He actually recently published a new collection. I think it's more of an art collection rather than um, stories like this, but I really want to have it on my shelf. I'm slowly but surely um, acquiring all of them, but he has quite a few that are out of print and uh, I didn't discover him till after they were out of print and they're really hard to find even on eBay or, or secondhand things here in Japan. So my life's goal would be to have all of his works on my shelf uh, as a book collector, but for now what I do have will have to do which I might add is not an insignificant collection so far. So this will be increasing um, in the years to come. The last Japanese book that I want to talk about is one that is somewhat of a prized possession of mine because every time I look at it, it just makes me smile and, and you know brings me joy. And that is the special anniversary edition of Winnie the Pooh. There's this beautiful library that my husband and I like to go to and they have this like mini bookstore inside where you can buy kind of nicer editions of books than you would find in, in usual bookstores here in Japan. And as soon as I saw this book, I knew I had to have it. I was a huge fan of Winnie the Pooh when I was little. I can still sing the theme song, you know, by heart. Um, I watched the movie so many times and I'm so happy to have these stories in another language and one that I'm currently learning. So if we take a look at the outside, this is the dust jacket. Wraps around here. Then if we take the dust jacket off, we have directly printed on the hardcover this beautiful artwork of the Hundred Acre Woods. There's a little Winnie the Pooh there. It's the spine. We have uh, rabbits, Kanga and Roo, a piglet here. Then uh, on the inside, the end pages are this beautiful rendition of the Hundred Acre Woods on both edges. And then the papers themselves are yellow with artwork on almost every single page. There's a little Eeyore there. So this edition is just gorgeous, stunning. It's really high quality. It feels great in my hands. It even has one of the ribbon bookmarks, you know, that us book lovers love to always mention. Why do we always mention when those are in books? <laughs> but for some reason we all do. <laughs> um, but yes, it has a, a ribbon bookmark. The language in this isn't as advanced or difficult as it might be in the Ehatvo or the um, Nordic Tales that I showed you from June Ida. So I am able to make my way through this a little bit quicker. But uh, yeah, I love this book so much. I'm so happy to have it in my possession and I'm going to treasure it for quite some time. And finally, we have made it to the last book in this massive book haul. <laughs> and this is actually a gift from my parents uh, because I read a nonfiction book that I fell in love with, which was Sapiens. Uh, I just ate this book up. I loved the way that, you know, human history was explored and how it's been, it's used to kind of, you know, extrapolate about the future. I thought this book was just fascinating. Humans are such a fascinating species. And because I loved it so much, my parents actually gifted me the uh, graphic novel edition of that book. So this is Sapiens, the uh, graphic history. So I actually haven't gotten to this yet, but I'm very excited to because I actually listened to uh, Sapiens originally via audiobook. And while I could not stop listening and I was obsessed with it, I was kind of lamenting the fact that I didn't have a physical copy to tab or make notes about, you know, what I was, what I found super fascinating. And I think that sitting down and reading um, something physically will help me remember those key points that I find fascinating a little bit better. And uh, this is just going to be such a fun medium to, to use to reread this. So yeah, I, I loved that book and I cannot wait to delve into this. Um, this isn't on my current TBR, but honestly holding it and looking at it, I, I might have to make it a priority this coming month because yeah, I just, I don't know, it's calling my name and the flop on it is amazing. This is gonna be an amazing reading experience. <laughs> So that concludes this massive book haul. I think I have about 32, 33 books in total, which actually isn't too much damage considering how long it's been 
um, you know, the, the, the time that this is spanning over. But if we were to add the stuff that I have bought and shipped to the States, I think it would be a little bit more of a drastic number. <laughs> but either way, I am so happy with the way that my collection is growing. You know, being more selective with what I choose to actually purchase has led to me with no buyer's remorse whatsoever. I think all of this is money well spent. Um, and for those of you who have sent me books and sent me gifts, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know what I did to deserve it but you know I'm so so thankful for it so uh, let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these if you own any of these if I've inspired you to pick up uh, something new that you hadn't thought of before uh, I would love to hear anything you have to say down below don't forget to like subscribe and click that bell it really helps me with the algorithm and I appreciate it but for now I'm gonna head out Johnny